How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I just spent a week with some of the largest creators in the space. I went to multiple parties, drinking with people, hearing their thoughts, their ideas, what they're planning behind the scenes. And I want to let you in. I want to give you a look under the covers at what happened during token 2049 what's happening in crypto what is happening with some of the largest companies if you don't mind though hit subscribe turn on the bell notification underneath the video to see future videos just like this there are also going to be some links underneath the video one is to margex where you can trade cryptocurrencies using leverage you don't have to use that link but like any channel out there, I do have sponsors. So that way I can continue to bring content, which is free to view. So there's a link to Margex where you can trade cryptocurrencies. There's also a link to Blowfin and CoinW. I attended both of their parties over the last week. Really good people at those companies that I was able to talk with, whether it was pro traders or business development, uh, business developers. BDs, <laughs> but definitely check out those companies as well in the comment section or in the description of the video. They give you some extra bonuses when you use those links. Now, I love going to conferences in crypto. Honestly, I think it's one of the best places to meet people, to understand what they're doing, understand their thoughts. And as someone that does like to have a drink from time to time, I think it's one of those one of those things that you can get people to be much more upfront with you when you bought them a round of shots or when you've had a few drinks with them at a party. Now, I was able to talk with some of the largest creators in the space, some of which, I'll be honest, I didn't even I didn't know who they were till I started talking to them. And wow, they are well connected. Now, I want to give you some of my thoughts, and I'm not going to name names or anything like that. But I want to give you some of my thoughts on the creators and the companies in crypto, where a lot of people think crypto is going and what they're watching out for. So first of all, if you've never been to one of these events, try to go, right? Have a couple different exchanges maybe that you have talked to in the past or that you use. Maybe you can get invites or something like that if you have enough of their token or something there there are so many parties there i think i went to maybe one tenth of the parties and yet we had parties every night but let me tell you this exchanges are spending money again during the bear market exchanges really tighten the purse strings right they don't really want to spend a lot of money they're spending again now is it cause for concern i don't think so it's different than what happened during 2020 and 2021. At that time, there were exchanges that were spending a lot of money. However, they weren't leverage exchanges. And the weird thing is the leverage exchanges were the ones that made it through the bear market. I'm sure that they spent a lot of money during that bull market of 2020 and 2021. But I didn't see it as much. I saw a lot of the centralized U.S. exchanges that didn't have leverage spending a lot of money, the ones that offered yield, like they were throwing parties all over the place in Miami, at Bitcoin Miami. I didn't see any centralized exchanges that don't have, that don't have leverage there. Um, and they're spending money in different ways. Back in 2020, 2021, there were a lot of flat fee contracts, like without getting into it, I know a lot of creators and they were getting paid flat fees to work with companies. They they uh, might say, hey, this is sponsored by FTX, and then put a link in the description, and maybe they got paid $1,000, $10,000. Who knows, right? There's some big creators that talked about this kind of stuff, and they're getting paid flat fees. Now, it's interesting, because exchanges are spending money, but they're not they're not spending money on contracts that are gonna be unprofitable. Like, I know a lot of people that already work with different uh, different um, exchanges and they say hey unless you can like pay me an uh, absurd amount I, I just have too much work already I have too many companies I work with 
And those companies aren't biting yet. They're not saying, okay, well, we'll give you whatever you want in terms of a flat fee. No, it's based on commission. And this is kind of a peek behind the curtains. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. But most of the time when people sign up for an exchange, you know, part of those, some, uh, some of those fees go back to the person that signed those people up. So like, for example, if you go under Marjex and use my link, you pay some fees, right, on trades. It's all on the website. And then I get a percentage of those, right? If you sign someone else up, let's say you go to Marjex using my link and then you have a friend that trades, you can sign them up. You get a percentage of their fees. So people uh, get a percentage of the fees, but the underlying exchange is still profitable from that because right? They have some expenses, but then they make some money and then they give the rest to whoever signed the people up. So someone might get, let's say when you sign up for Marjex and then you sign someone else up, you get 40% of the fees. The rest goes to the exchange, the 60%. So they're willing to play around with that. The exchanges are right now, but they're not just shilling out tons of money like exchanges were back in 2020 and 2021 without even knowing if it was going to be profitable. Right? You can run the numbers and you know what your margin is. So you can make sure that you're profitable on every single person that comes into your exchange. But that's not how it used to go. So I think the exchanges are getting smarter. Also, a lot of exchanges are vying for positions. Like I've heard about Dubai parties in the past. And I know that they throw more parties than we do here in the US like the crypto exchanges do. But it really does seem like they're trying to win over a lot of uh, investors, a lot of, a lot of influencers. Well, it's something that's interesting is a lot of the exchanges are owned by Chinese investors. And I kind of knew that, but there are more than you think. Like a lot of the parent companies are actually owned by Chinese investors or they were started by someone in China. And like those CEOs are going on and talking like at these parties. Some are very young in their 30s, very successful entrepreneurs that are some of the best entrepreneurs in China. And I bring that up because I know some people are a little bit cautious of that. But also to state the fact that like the U.S. has to be very careful. The U.K. have to be very careful because there are people making a lot of money actually increasing liquidity in the crypto ecosystem and they're doing it out of China. Right? Or they're doing it out of Dubai. They're doing it out of Seychelles. They're doing it out of the Cayman Islands. They're doing it everywhere, it seems like, besides the UK and the US. So they have to be careful, right? There are a couple, obviously, exchanges based out of the US, but it's becoming more and more difficult to operate in the US. Also, crypto veterans are just everywhere right now. Like, obviously, a lot of people made it through the last cycle and the cycle before that, but not too many people are really worried like at this dip, right? I talk to a lot of people, they think this is just part of it, right? And I feel the same way. It's actually healthy to see dips like this. No one's freaking out. Like if you're freaking out when we see a 10% move, influencers, people in the space aren't really freaked out about that. Um, a lot of people think the late 2025 is probably the peak of the market, which makes me think it's probably actually gonna be before that, like maybe, it's an alt season like we saw back in 2021 where, yes, Bitcoin peaked again like late 2021, but alts peaked six months before. Maybe it's something similar to that where alts peak about a year from now. Who knows? I'm, I'm not making any predictions, but it is something interesting to think about. If a lot of people think something's going to happen, typically it doesn't happen in crypto. Also, it seems like investors are more risk tolerant than in the past. Like I Again, I talk to a lot of YouTubers. I know a lot of YouTubers. And a lot of them are investing in ways that they haven't invested, either through leverage, through meme coins, through token allocations. Like they're getting into riskier things, but they realize the risk, right? And I think that's actually healthy. Like if, if you come into this market and don't, don't respect the meme coin, you can be left in the past. You can be left behind. But you also have to realize that they're extremely risky, right? And that's that's a hard thing for people to understand their first cycle in crypto. I was someone that was like, no, I'm not really touching that stuff. I wasn't touching leverage. 
I didn't really buy meme coins. Uh, I didn't do token allocations. Now it's different because I realize the risks, but also I think I've gotten a lot better at actually figuring out the odds of winning and taking my bets at opportune times when everyone's bearish, you go long. When everyone's bullish, you ease off, you take profits. And I think that's something you get after being in the market for years and years and years, always studying it. Now, let me know your thoughts though. Let me know if something like this is helpful. It is kind of putting a lot of information out there that I, it sounds cheesy to say, but I know a lot of people don't want that kind of stuff to get out. They don't want people to know how they make money. They don't want to know what companies are doing behind the scenes. But I do like to give that information to you because I think it is very sensitive information, but very useful information. So if you don't mind, just hit the like button because I know there are going to be people grilling me down below in the comments section. There are links to exchanges underneath the video as well. Always be careful whenever you put your crypto on a centralized exchange, there's always some added risk versus just holding it yourself. But if you can figure out a way to leverage trade on your cold storage wallet, be my guest. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.